Hi, everyone. Um, so welcome to lab five, superposition and equivalent circuits. So um, as the title of the lab suggests, in this, um, this week, we're going to look at two very important circuit analysis tools, namely superposition and equivalent circuits, uh, particularly Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuit models. Uh, in addition, we'll also explore this um, idea of a loading effect and how to mitigate it using voltage buffers. <clears throat> One quick reminder about lab five is that um, for this lab, you will be submitting a formal report uh, instead of a write-up that, that you are used to uh, for the previous labs. So I will go over what a formal report should look like and um, how it differs from a write-up in a separate video. But just keep in mind that you need to uh, write a report instead of a write-up. Another important thing about Lab 5 is um, that the due date for the report is on March 5th. So you have um, three weeks from, uh, al almost three weeks from today uh, to get the report completed. Okay, uh, that's because next week is going to be a lab practical or exam week. And uh, uh, so the report won't be due next week, rather the week after that. Okay, so let's start by talking about superposition. Okay, so this, the idea of superposition is that for linear circuits, um, we can we can break up the circuit so that uh, we only look at one of the sources at a time and combine uh, the outputs of the sources, uh, of the individual sources to, to get the overall output of the entire circuit, right? So um, basically if you have, if we get one output uh, using one source, another output using another source, a third output using a third source, the combined effect of all of those sources acting together is simply a linear combination of the individual outputs. Um, so this is best understood with an example. So let's take a look at an example. So here I have a circuit that has two sources, two voltage sources, a three volt source and a six volt source uh, connected with a resistive network as shown here. Now, if I wanted to find the voltage Vx on this circuit, um, I can obviously go ahead and solve it using simple nodal analysis tools or KCL and KVO, right? And I can find the voltage um, as uh, three volts here, right? But um, we can also break the circuit um, or solve the circuit by using the principle of superposition, right? Uh, which means that we only look at the effect of one of the sources at a time um, and shut off the other source, okay? So since these are voltage sources, shutting off the voltage source means that you uh, make it into a short, right? So in this first case, I've shut off the second six volt source. And now it's um, a very simple circuit to solve for this voltage Vx1. It's simply a voltage divider between this parallel combination um, and this 4K, which is, if you do uh, the voltage divider analysis, you get that as one volt. I can do the same analysis, but now with the three volt source shorted or shut off and only the six volt source active. Um, do the same uh, similar voltage um, divider analysis to get that Vx has to be two volts. Now uh, we've got the outputs at this node uh, due to each of the sources. In order to get the, the overall output due to uh, both the sources being active, you just sum up the two uh, outputs, one volt and two volt to get the same three volt we got using um, our KCL analysis. Right? So that's, that's the idea of superposition. This is a very simple example, and the benefits of using superposition may not be as apparent, 
But uh, trust me, for a larger circuit, when you have um, a larger network of components and maybe four or five different sources, this is a very handy, um, handy circuit analysis tool. Um, so this principle you'll be investigating in, in, in task one and task four of the 82 version of the lab. Um, also, if you're doing the simulation version, then you'll be looking at it in task three. Now let's talk about the other uh, circuit analysis tool called equivalent circuits. Um, for this also, it's best to learn with, with examples. Okay. So here I have four different circuits, um, each with a different voltage source and different combinations of resistors, um, resistors and current sources. Okay. So <clears throat> now my claim is that given these output ports, all of these circuits are equivalent. What does that mean? It means that if I measure the voltage on this output port, um, I will measure 10 volts, right? So that's just using simple voltage divider. divider. So 20 volts across 4K and 4K, you get 10 volts. Uh, here again, 15 volts divided across 3K and 6K, you can do the voltage divider analysis again, but you'll see that the, this is again 10 volts. Um, now you've got 10 volts here and a 2K, but this is an open circuit. So um, this is quite easily 10 volts. Um, and now the fourth circuit, you have a five milliamp a current source um, driving five milliamps of current through a two kilo ohm resistor. So then again, the voltage across here is 10 volts, right? But now let's say, um, I do something different to these ports. Um, let's say I short this, I short these two terminals. And now the question is how much current is going through this terminal, right? So if I short this two terminals, then this 4K is bypassed. Uh, this 4K is bypassed. So you, you have a total of 20 volts um, drop across this 4K resistor which means uh, the current is 20 over 4K, which is five milliamps. Similarly here, again, if I uh, short these terminals, I have 15 volts across three kilo ohms, which is again, five milliamps. Here I have 10 volts across two kilo ohms, which is again, five milliamps. And again, um, so here I bypass the two kilo ohms completely so you've got five milliamps, right? So, so far, just by looking at these, if um, just by looking at uh, the measurements made on these two terminals, we cannot differentiate between uh, either of these four circuits. Uh, it goes even further than this. Um, you can in fact attach a resistor here and still uh, the results are the same. So for example, I can attach a four kilo, two kilo ohm resistor here and measure the voltage across this two kilo ohm. Um, and you can do the math. You'll see that this comes out to five volts, right? Do the same exercise here, put a two kilo ohm here. You'll get that the voltage across this two kilo ohm is five volts. Put a two kilo ohm um, resistor here now in this case, it's quite easy to see that this is five volts because you've got two kilo ohm, two kilo ohm volt, volts is divided that just divides the 10 volt into uh, by half to five volts. And again, here, you put a two kilo ohm, you've got a two kilo ohm in parallel with the two kilo ohm. That's a total of one kilo ohm uh, resistance and you have a total of five milliamps. So that's a total of five volts across, okay? So the point I'm trying to make is that if you, if you were given a, a circuit uh, that's hidden from you and you only had access to, to its two output ports and you made these measurements, you measured the voltage here and then you shorted it and measured the current or you apply a resistor and you measure the voltage across that resistor and you get say five volts um, with open circuit, you get five milliamps um, you get five milliamps as the short circuit current, then there's no way you can tell 
me which one of these four circuits um, is inside that black box, right? So in that sense, all four of these circuits are equivalent. Um, in fact, you can come up, come up with infinitely many different con combinations of sources and resistors that are um, in fact equivalent to um, all of these circuits, okay? Um, but um, even though these all circuits are equivalent, uh, they're not equal, um, meaning that if, if I had access to the internals of the circuit and I wanted to measure a circuit, uh, a point within inside of the circuit, then obviously those are not gonna be the same, right? So um, yeah, so it's only uh, when you're concerned with the output port um, and the behavior of the circuits are the same, we call them equivalent circuits. Um, of these four examples that I just talked about, the second two, uh, the, the, the last two are special uh, because these two circuits only have one voltage source um, and one resistor, or in the second case, a current source and a resistor, right? And these uh, get a special name. This is called a Thevenin equivalent circuit model, uh, circuit model. And this is called a Norton equivalent circuit model. Okay, um, okay. So that's the idea with um, Norton and Thevenin equivalent circuit model, right? So here I give you an example of a, of a simple circuit, um, simple circuits that can be um, studied by looking at um, uh, an even simpler circuit, uh, the Thevenin equivalent circuit model. Uh, but you know, the, the first two circuits here, these could have been giant circuits with hundreds of different component. So you can still, um, you can still model or model the behavior of a giant circuit with lots and lots of components and sources with a simple Thevenin and um, Nor Norton equivalent circuit. Right? So that's the power of of equivalent circuits is that you can you can model any large circuit as long as it's linear um, with a simple model that consists of only a voltage source and a resistor or a current source and a resistor. Okay, so this tool or this idea of equivalent circuits you will explore in um, task two and task three of the 82 version or in task one and task two of the LT Spice version. Okay. Now, the third topic we're, we're going to look at is the idea of loading. Now, this term loading comes from um, the term load, and it's uh, it's basically any. Um, any component that's added to the output of a circuit and that draws some current or, or it, in EE lingo, it's called, it loads the circuit, right? So here I have two examples, uh, two example circuits. One is a 10 volt source with a series one kilo ohm resistor. And one, the second is a 10 volt source with a 50 ohm resistor series, okay? So here, if, say I add a load of um, one kilo, right? In both of these cases. Then uh, the voltage across the one kilo ohm in the first case will be five volts, right? And the voltage across the second one kilo ohm uh, in the second circuit will be almost 10 volts, okay? So say, so for example, if this circuit was a voltage source, something like the one you use um, on the 82, um, then this is a pretty bad voltage source, right? Because if I add a one kilo ohm resistor, I wanted a 10 volt, uh, 
uh, I want it to 10 volt output, but as soon as I add a one kilo ohm resistor, I get five volts. In fact, if I change this one kilo ohm resistor to 500 ohms, then I'll get an even smaller voltage here. But over here, uh, if this was my voltage source um, and I add a one kilo ohm resistor, you do the voltage divider and I end up with almost equal to 10 volts. If I make it smaller to say about 500 ohms, um, then this voltage is still around 10, maybe 9.98, uh, something like that. Um, so as you can see that um, even with the same 10 volt source, because of the series resistance, these two circuits behave uh, quite differently, right? And uh, the effect of adding a load is different on both these circuits, okay? Um, but but the effect the, the loading effect exists in both cases. It's just that in this case it's uh, it's very severe, and in the second case it's not. In fact, uh, even in the second case, if I were to make this resistor smaller and smaller and get, go up to say 50 ohms, then this will again suffer um, the same same kind of uh, loading effect. Uh, such that the output voltage is now down to five volts. Okay, but obviously, if you, it's clear that um, with a smaller series resistance, um, this circuit, the second circuit, can handle a much wider range of uh, loads on its output. Okay. Um, so this is uh, this effect of the output voltage dropping when a, a load or a resistor is added to the output is called loading. And it can be a very pesky problem when designing circuits if you're not uh, paying attention to dif the different um, uh, output resistances um, of different parts of your circuit or the input resistances of, of different parts of your circuit, right? Uh, but there's a, a simple solution to this loading effect, and that is to introduce a buffer. Now, what a buffer is, is uh, that it's a two terminal device. So it's a two port device. So it has two sets of uh, two terminals, one input terminal and one output terminal. But uh, what it does is on its input terminal, it has a very high resistance, input resistance that is isolated from its output terminal, which has a very low output resistance, okay? So now what I can do is insert this voltage buffer between my voltage source and my load. Uh, say again, one kilo ohms. So if I were to attach this one kilo ohm directly to uh, the circuit, you uh, recall that I got five volts instead of 10 volts as I wanted. But now with this voltage buffer in between, what it does is uh, in the first stage, you get a voltage divider between a one kilo ohm and a one giga ohm, for instance. And so this, the voltage across this Rn is almost 10, right? So it's 9.99999. Um, and inside of this voltage buffer, there's a voltage dependent voltage source which looks at the voltage across this R in, and it simply replicates it. Um, and it has a very small output resistance, say around 10 ohms, right? So now again, oh, when I put the load one kilo ohm at the output, now um, if you do the voltage divider here, all of the voltage, uh, almost all of the voltage uh, V in occurs across the one kilo ohm resistor, right? So in that way, by uh, isolating the input and output ports, the voltage buffer um, creates an isolation between, um, between the voltage source, signal source, and the load, right? And we can, we can uh, mitigate the effects of loading uh, using the, these voltage buffers. Now, so this, um, circuit that I've shown here is just a model uh, of a voltage buffer. It's a circuit model. Um, in reality, uh, the internals of this voltage buffer is gonna be a lot more complicated. Um, 
you probably learned that in higher uh, levels of electrical engineering. Um, but uh, the beauty of this model is that it captures the behavior of the voltage buffer um, completely. Uh, okay, so this um, low if uh, effect of loading you look at in task three of um, the 82 version and I believe task two of uh, the LT Spice version. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so those are the three key ideas explored in this lab. Let me just go through each of the lab tasks um, in a little bit of detail. So in task one and task four of the 82 version of the task, um, you're gonna look at this circuit. So in the lab manual, you've been given this circuit. It's got three inputs um, and one output. Uh, but what may not be clear is that each of these nodes here, it's actually connected to a voltage source like this to ground, right? Um, so this is something that you have to become you uh, get used to in electrical engineering. This is just a shorthand for saying that there's a voltage source uh, attached at this node. Okay, so since this is your first time, it may not be that uh, clear that that's the case, uh, which is why I've shown it to you here. But in the future, just uh, just keep in mind that. Um, uh, these voltage sources may not always be explicitly shown. Okay, so uh, in this task, what you're doing is um, you're gonna, so there are three inputs, three sources, and um, you're gonna look at uh, the output, measure the output of this circuit across R4 due to each of these voltage source, and then due to uh, these sources being applied simultaneously. Right. So one thing to keep in mind here is that when you're looking at the output due to only one of the sources, say V1, then you have to make sure that this second source is, is off um, or um, more, but more accurately that it needs to be grounded. Okay, so it, it needs to be shorted to ground. Same with the, the other source, right? So it needs to be grounded. Next time, if when you're looking at voltage, the effect of voltage two on the output, then you have to short um, voltage one to ground and voltage three to ground and only look at voltage two, right? So that's explicitly stated in, in your lab manual also to ground the uh, voltage sources that are not being used. Um, but I just wanted to reiterate that because um, it's something uh, to miss. Okay, so in task four, you're gonna do the same exercise, uh, but in simulation on LT Spice. Uh, for those of you who don't have an 82 yet, uh, you're just gonna do the simulation version of it on LT Spice and that'll be it. Okay. So in task two of the 82 version and task one of the simulation version, um, you're gonna, you're looking at this circuit here uh, with three resistors and a voltage source. So um, uh, the task is to design uh, these components. Uh, your task is to design these components such that the equivalent circuit the Thevenin equivalent circuit of this um, has an open circuit voltage of 2.5 volts and a Thevenin equivalent resistance of 1.5 kilo ohms, right? Um, so, um, so how do you go about designing these uh, values for these components? Uh, you'll, you'll have to do some circuit analysis and write um, a, an expression for the uh, open circuit voltage in terms of Vs, R1, R2, and R3. And then again, um, an expression for the Thevenin equivalent resistance in terms of R1, R2, and R3, right? And so you'll end up with two equations, two equations, right? 
But um, as you can see, there's four unknowns, right? So Vs, R1, R2, and R3. So there's only two equations and four unknowns, which means uh, you cannot exactly solve it. But that also means that there's infinitely many possible answers to this question. Uh, you only need to find one, okay? And um, so, so the way to do it is make um, an engineering design choice. Just pick any um, two values uh, out of these four. That's gonna be your design choice. I can choose this Vs to be say four volts um, and then R1 to be, um, I don't know, 0 0.5 kilo ohms. And then the two equations will govern what R2 and R3 need to be, okay? So there's, a, there's an infinite number of solutions here. You need to find one. Um, uh, and that's, that's how you go about doing it, okay? Okay, so um, next in, in this task, what you will do is, um, to, 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 let's look at, yeah, in this task, what you will do next is develop a method to test uh, to find the open circuit voltage, thevenin equivalent voltage and thevenin equivalent resistance for um, an arbitrary uh, two terminal network, right? So forget about this circuit for now, right? So you're given an arbitrary network that you don't know what is, what is inside of it. You only have access to these two ports. Now you're gonna make measurements on, on these two ports. You can measure the voltage, you can measure the current, you can measure the resistance, you can do whatever to these two ports, but only to these two terminals. Um, and infer from your measurements what the Thevenin equivalent resistance and voltage of the stuff that's inside, right? Okay, so inside of this black box could be anything, but from these measurements, you can infer what the Thevenin equivalent voltage and resistance uh, should be, okay? So you're gonna develop a method in step two. And then in step three, you're gonna apply this method to this circuit, okay? You can apply this method to this circuit and you're gonna, uh, by, uh, and by doing that, you will come up with a number for open circuit voltage and uh, Thevenin resistance, uh, but you designed this circuit to have a particular open circuit voltage and Thevenin resistance. So then you'll 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 sort of verify whether your design was correct or not using this method. Okay. Um, so just keep in mind though that um, this second step in this task is to come up with a generic method that has nothing to do with this circuit. Okay you only have access to the two output terminals. Okay. So your method should not involve say, turn off VS or uh, connect R1 to ground and stuff like that because you, you have no idea what's inside of you. Okay, um, next task, um, we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna look at how to mitigate loading um, by using voltage buffer. And the voltage buffer that we're going to use is uh, composed of an operational amplifier. You don't know what an op amp is yet, but um, we will learn about that in future labs. But for now, just uh, keep in mind that uh, an operational amplifier that has been set up in this configuration acts as a voltage buffer. Okay, so, the, so this operational amplifier has um, two input pins, a one output pin, and two supply pins. Okay, these two supply pins need to be connected to plus five volts and minus five volts. And like I said earlier, um, sometimes these voltage sources are not explicitly shown, but you gotta make, keep in mind that this actually means there's a five volt source connected like this. And this means that there's a minus five volt source connected over here, okay? Uh, so sometimes voltage sources are not explicitly shown on circuit schematics. Okay, um, but um, it has an input port and an output port. 
And uh, basically it has a very large input resistance and a very small output resistance. Uh, and we're gonna use this as a voltage buffer to isolate uh, a load of um, one 560 ohms from the circuit that we designed in the previous task, okay? So this task, we uh, in the previous task, you designed a circuit to have a Thevenin resistance of 1.5 kilo ohms. Um, in this task, we're gonna attach um, a 560 ohm load uh, to that circuit. That means you'll be attaching 560 ohm resistor here and uh, observe the effects of loading, All right? Um, you, can, you can do the math using this voltage um, Thevenin model now uh, to make it simpler, but you should see a, a, a loading effect in that um, without the 560 ohm, you should measure an open circuit voltage, but with the 560 ohm um, attached, it will be a lower voltage, right? Uh, but next thing you will do is uh, insert this buffer in between the source and the load. And, um, um, and then you should see that the loading effect has been mitigated, right? Uh, but, the, but the tricky thing here is uh, for many people is how to connect the source to the buffer and then buffer to the load. Uh, if you look at just this picture, you might be thinking that there's only one terminal here, but the source has two output terminals, um, right? So, so this is actually where the voltage is that goes into the input terminal. And the second terminal is ground, which is also the same ground that's used on um, uh, for the buffer. And so the output again connects to the resistor, but then the second end of that is again connected to ground, so everything uh, the second terminal in all of these um, source buffer and load is ground, okay? So don't confuse that. Okay, um, the other thing about this buffer um, is that, like I said, it's, it's using an operational amplifier. And this comes in a package that um, you haven't seen before. Um, Basically, it's got two rows of four pins, and each pin corresponds to one of the um, either inputs or outputs or supplies of um, the operational amplifier, right? So um, the thing to keep in mind with these is that the two rows uh, have to straddle the bridge uh, or, the, or the trench in on your breadboard so that each uh, pin gets its own row of, of um, own row on the breadboard, okay? So um, the lecture video um, for this lab actually shows you a way to connect uh, this device in the configuration shown in the, in the lab manual. So just take a look at that and you can follow that um, uh, breadboard um, schematic one-to-one um, -one if you have difficulty um, trying to build the circuit with this with this uh, package. Okay, so the, the last thing is um, you need to attach a, a decoupling capacitor to ground, um, okay, on each of these supplies. Um, so these are going to be, well, these capacitors will isolate the power supplies from any noise and they always need to be connected every, anytime you're using a, an operational amplifier. Um, so how you would do that is, um, let's say, again, this is, uh, it, the lecture video goes over it, but I'm just going to show you real quick. Let's say that you've connected your plus five volts here and you've connected your ground here. So this is your zero volts. Um, then um, the power supply here needs to connect to plus five, but um, uh, a, a, a capacitor needs to connect from this V plus to uh, ground, okay? So 
many times what students do is instead of connecting uh, this V plus terminal directly to phi plus and then also to the capacitor and then to the ground, right? Uh, what they do is instead connect uh, this V plus terminal to plus, oops, two plus five uh, through the capacitor. And this is wrong, right? So you need to connect the V plus directly to the five volts, but then also um, the V plus through the capacitor to ground. Okay, so keep that in mind. You need to do the same thing for the V minus. Instead, this goes to minus five volts. And then this also goes to a capacitor and then to uh, zero volts. Okay, so um, again, uh, the lecture video shows you an exact um, uh, layout for the circuit that you can follow. Okay, so these are just the tasks, uh, task lists. I already talked about all of these, so I don't need to talk about them again. Um, yeah, for the LD Spice version, uh, the tasks are the same, except uh, the only difference is that you're going to do it on in simulation instead of on the breadboard. And um, yeah, so that would be it. Okay, so um, uh, so like I said before, for this task, you'll be doing a, a report, a formal report instead of a write-up, and I will talk about that in a separate video. Also, next week will be um, the week of lab practicals. Um, so I'll, I'm going to talk about the logistics of the lab practical in another video as well. Um, so don't forget to watch that. All right. Good luck. <laughs>